you see what I'm talking about. So the joint is hot. Now also, you know what I'm saying, like this is something that, you know, I, I'm putting out there. Alright? Now, the reason why I'm putting this out there is because, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure who mentioned it, but they was talking about trophies and home rewards seeking one another. You know what I'm saying? Now, imagine winning a trophy, right? In home, I mean, sorry, imagine playing, you know, whatever video game, and you win a trophy. And as soon as you win a trophy, it unlocks a home reward to coincide with the game you're playing. So let's say you're playing Infamous, right? You know, and when you play Infamous, let's say you get a certain gold trophy, and that, as soon as you get that trophy, it unlocks a home reward. So you gotta go into home and get your outfit, or go into home and you get extra something or whatever. The trophies coincide with home. That right there is simply genius. You wanna know why? Because that's one step to, for many steps that home is creating itself to be a decision maker when it comes to what game you're gonna buy for what platform when it comes to multi-platform titles. Now, look, look at games like Modern Warfare 2. Major, major games that's multi-platform, right? What if, now a lot of people buy the DCC version because of the online experience and achievements. What if you get the PSD version, right? And let's say you get like a platinum trophy, and stuff like that, if you get a platinum trophy in, in the game and stuff like that, you go to home and it unlocks a secret door. And in this secret door, you gotta like do scavenger hunt or something to find a gun. And if you find that gun or whatever, that gun will be unlocked in Modern Warfare 2. And that particular gun will be exclusive to the PS3 version and it adds more to the gameplay. Things like that is what we need. And they're actually on the verge of doing things just like that. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna, I'm telling you, man, home is gonna be sick. I'm telling you. So stay tuned to that, because that's supposed to be the way they make home a decision maker for multi-platform sales. So stay tuned to that. That is crazy. Now, moving on. Uncharted 2, a new beta supposed to be hitting um uh, later this summer, according to um what I believe Evan Wells said. Um, I could be wrong, but I think Evan Wells said it. But yeah, this will be a new beta coming this summer. They are not playing with Uncharted 2. The first beta came out, it was amazing, it was successful, and it wasn't no bad slowdown or lag. It was great. This beta is just going to give people that much more hype and sweeten the taste. You know what I'm saying? Sweeten. You gotta say it with me. Sweeten the taste. The taste buds in your mouth because people is like this. Uh. When they see this game, you see what I'm saying? So I'm telling you right now, stay tuned for the next beta. Get your hands on it, get involved, get to do whatever you gotta do to get in because you don't wanna miss out on it, alright? And this beta in particular it may have more features, go have another level, all of that. So you wanna experience it, so don't miss out on it because this is gonna be a big game this year, alright? Now, also, BioWare. BioWare for some reason is real pumped about PlayStation 3 development. Now that's great to be pumped up about PS3 development, ain't no wrong with that, but it's something that they said that's interesting. And uh, what they said that's, that's interesting is that they're so pumped up about PS3 development because they figure out the advantages PS3 development has. Now, let me ask you a question. If you're a game developer and you're making games and you're doing a great job, that's great. But if you figure something out like, oh shoot, I could do that? Are you going to be pumped and excited? Because now you found something new you can do to add to your game. Or when you make a new game, you have a different you know, mindset now because of the new discovered power and advantages you have with the PS3. Now, BioWare, you know, figured it out. Now, check this out. There was always talk about Mass Effect coming to um on the PS3. And we all know that EA owns Mass Effect IP. EA owns that. Will it still come to PS3? Mm, it's possible. Does it make sense to do it? No. It really don't. What they should do is make a brand new game, whether it's multi-platform or not. Make a brand new game to take full advantage of these advantages that they just discovered, you know, on the PS3. 
and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And if they do decide to release a Mass Effect 2 on PS3, they better make sure those advantages stand out significantly for PS3 owners to, you know, pick up the game to make it worth their while. You know, you know what I'm saying? So that right there is very important. But by the way, it is pumped for PS3 development, and it, you never know what that could mean. But I tell you this, I tell you this right now: don't don't expect no bad ports. And two, considering that Mass Effect 2 is currently still exclusive, and EA owns the rights, that just goes to show that hey, you know, even though EA is the big multi-platform supporter. They can bring out, they can publish something that's exclusive too. And if they can do it for 360, they can also do it for PS3. And if the, and if the advantages cause the developers to strictly focus and zero in on one platform to get the most out of it, you damn right they will do it. And regardless of who publishing it, you will see Bioware make a PS3 exclusive game if the advantages is that significant. So stay tuned for that because you never know what's going to happen. And we also. Even though Sony say they don't pay money for certain things, put it like this. When you in competition and you're trying to win and you're trying to do things, regardless of a 10 year life cycle, if you have an opportunity to do something in the industry, considering the situation that they have now, don't sleep on Sony. They always got ways of getting what they want to. Feel me? So we're going to leave it at that. Now, we're about to move on to the general news. So one love and God bless, and I hope you enjoy the show. Peace. General news. <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid. I just bug it out. Y'all, I love this, man. Y'all understand when you got passion for games and the about game show and everything, this is what you get. This is what you see. You feel me? Now check this out. Yo, this is general news. It's crazy right now because I got some stuff to put y'all on to. Now, a while back, I believe in 2007, right? You know, John Carmack was talking about the um memory and PS3 and how it works, and how 360 has more, because like 96 megabytes of RAM is used for PlayStation 3's operating system. That's a lot. That's a lot. Couldn't find out. Things may be changing in the world of PlayStation. Check this out, dog. From what I from what I'm hearing right now behind the scenes with some developers that's working on some major major things for the Sony platform. Come to find out, they got more access like to the memory, like the operating system. I believe there's a software that that allows like the operating system like you don't gotta use as much RAM anymore like they cut it down by I believe 35% so they're not using as much OS RAM to run you know a lot of these things and you know what else like all those firmware updates that security patches and you know everything Pell said it itself a lot of those things is the features that you don't see like the behind the scenes stuff that's for developers and things like that everything Pell said it itself well some of that stuff is actually towards this particular software that's supposed to lower the RAM that's being used for the operating system, which is going to give developers more access to that memory. And I'm telling you right now, they must all been they they got to be doing it now or something because God of War three. I'm not sure if you guys pay attention, but when they when he ripped that dude head off, like the way the skin ripped and everything, there was no tension breaks up. It takes a lot of power. Just that one scene alone, it takes a lot of power to do things like that. You feel me? It takes a lot of power to do things like that. You know, and also looking at Uncharted 2 on the of the physics and everything, it takes a lot of power to do these things. You know what I'm saying? And if you notice, year over year over year, there's a major, major increase in like Sony exclusive titles. Like it's, I mean, look at the jump from Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2. It is really significant. Like it's. It's damn near like night and day, like not like it's on another system, but it's that big of a jump. Resistance 1 to Resistance 2. It's a big, huge leaps and bounds, like jumps, you know what I mean? That right there is important, and it goes to show the development process and how it's growing. So, the key thing to the situation is that already because of the Blu-ray and other things, you know, Ray's supposed to have, you know, better textures and, you know, the old mega texture system that John Carmack is working with. But the crazy thing about it is having more access to the RAM. Now, if John Carmack has more access to the RAM, on top of what was already said back a few years back, 
you know, imagine what Rage is going to really be like if that extra memory is utilized because of the less RAM that's being used for the OS. Now things is going to really be crazy. Things is really heating up, dog. It's really getting crazy. 30 years in the game, I'm telling you, it's fire. So stay tuned to that, and hopefully, you know, developers give us a bit more insight. But